what is up everybody i got another review out for a game called freak crossing now what a name that is you may have missed this one as it came out at the end of september i had no idea what to expect when coming into this game as i only saw the trailer in a couple of screenshots but i was drawn in by the premise and decided to give it a shot thanks to the devs at wild bus studios for sending me a review code this game is wacky in every sense of the word and as you can see from the video there are some interesting mechanics let's get into it Free Crossing tells the story of your second uncle who has been hospitalized unexpectedly and entrusted you with replacing him as the temporary village head. The village is in a sparsely populated wilderness where years of mismanagement have led to most residents becoming unruly. The game features multiple endings, but only one automatic save slot is available. Your choice will determine the fate of the villagers. Disabling the save load feature aims to provide a unique gaming experience with each save, forcing players to save every moment. So by the description, what exactly is this game? I would describe it as a very small town management sim dealing with the people of the town. You are free to roam around the town, but to advance the game and do quests, you must interact with the red question mark on your mini map. Sometimes talking to a certain townsperson will trigger the event so you don't always need to go to the marker. And each situation could be different. You could be getting a drink with the bartender as he cries over his girlfriend cheating on him, confronting the lazy king for not cleaning up the trash, or getting on the braggart for creating a phone scam. In any case, once you interact with them, you are then presented with a couple of choices. One choice could lead to a game game over screen while another leads to a mini game. Now if you lose you will also get a game over screen but if you win the day moves on to the next town problem. This is where the multiple endings come into play. At the end of the game or the game over screen you will get a town satisfaction percentage so you'll want to keep playing more and more to get to 100%. Now about that getting to 100% I wasn't really sure how to get 100% because it seems like there's a very defined path and how everything went. And the most I ever got whenever trying to complete the game was about 65% and even trying to do things as perfectly as I can. But maybe I need to go back and do some more cleaning up. But luckily, when you start a new game, each event plays out the same. So you need to remember the pattern of events, win the mini games, and then make your way to the end and get the best percentage. Now, some of these mini games are very unique in their own game mechanics. So it took me a while to figure out how any of this even went the first time because I was just so caught off by some of the game mechanics because it doesn't really explain. There's not really a tutorial of how to do things other than just go to this townsperson, talk to them, and then choose a varying amount of sentences and then a mini game starts so whatever happens you just it's very much a trial and error so it led to some interesting type of mini games but there's also a small small side quest of gaining the trust of three dogs and cats but that doesn't really do anything besides help your town right and actually i think they're a little bit harder than some of your main quest mini games so watch out for these dogs and cats that very much populate your house when you gain their trust at the very end and as the description suggests there is only one auto save and each decision counts and if you choose to continue it will bring you back to your last save point there's quite a charm with this retro cartoon style the pixelated characters are expressive and the dialogue is pretty unique albeit kind of adult at times so parents beware as this may not be the best game for the family i was pretty shocked by some of the content that was <laughs> relayed in this game i was like oh yeah this is gonna be kind of a cute little mini game with some animals and there's some there's some stuff in there there's some stuff you gotta watch out for in this game but something you will notice from the music is that there are some interesting pixel recreations of some notable songs here are a couple try to guess what they are It was quite a surprise to me and definitely gave me a good chuckle when I heard it for the first time. I had to stop and just take a second 
listen as to what I was listening to. I was like, oh yeah, it's totally that song, but in a very like retro, weird, pixelated format. I also enjoyed the mini games and replaying the game to see if I could get 100%. It's not a very long game, so you could do a fair amount of runs in a short amount of time. There's not a whole lot to complain about here as Free Crossing achieves its goal of immersing me in this crazy world. There were only a few minor bugs with not being able to use the A button on my Switch to select a few options and also a little bit of Joy-Con drift, but perhaps mostly this was on my controller, but I'm happy to say that there were no huge game breaking bugs. So if you need a break from all of the crazy high octane AAA games coming out, you want to immerse yourself in a color retro cartoon world with interesting characters, then Free Crossing is the game for you. There are some replay value to be had and it is well worth it for the price of $4.99 on the eShop. So it's very much a good deal. But let me know in the comments if you pick this up because I would love to hear your experience with it and I would love to always have a discussion with people in the comments about any of the games that I review and play. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel while you're down there for more indie game reviews, commentary, LPs, and more. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chike, and I will see you next time. Bye.